Hi everybody, it's Father Mike. We're on the Father Mike Minute. And we are again in the Liturgy of the Word right now. Um, yesterday I mentioned what the uh, Liturgy, of, how the Liturgy of the Word be, kind of looked like before the reforms that followed Vatican II. Um, now I will share our current form of the Mass, the Novus Ordo, where uh, it, it, again, it's the same Mass. So there's beautiful things we can learn all around. And this, we are in the first reading now of Mass. And the first reading is now done, not at the high altar, like I talked about yesterday. I talked about the reasons sort of why that was, but now I'll talk about the reasons why it was changed. Uh, here we are, this is where the first reading takes place. Notably dif notable difference, the first reading is now done by not the priest, but by a reader, by a lector. And why is that? It is because uh, of the beautiful invitation from the Second Vatican Council to have the, um, the, the uh, presence of the laity in the liturgy a little bit more pronounced. Um, and so it's a beautiful thing uh, to hear. I can still remember, you know, when I was growing up, I can remember certain people from, from St. Charles who would read. I used, to th I used to think that my preschool teacher, she was one of the, the lectors at St. Charles, and I used to think that she actually wrote the readings when she read them. And I uh, thought, wow, she did pretty good. You know, and I was always excited when Mrs. Alexander was the reader because I knew her, you know, and she was my teacher. She had been my teacher. And, and so I was always excited. I remember a man named George who would always read the Easter Vigil and he would read that beautiful reading from Genesis about the creation uh, account. Um, but, you know, uh, people read differently and that's part of why in Lexio Divina which stands for holy which means holy reading um, the a reading is read and you might have a group of people you know doing Lexio Divina and they're doing a, a, a kind of a, a prayer with the readings the Word of God and, and you have the re the reading read several times by different people and that is because you hear it differently when depending on who is reading and how they read and the voice of, of a human being is, can be a very powerful mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit. And so when, a, when a, the lector comes forward to, to read, he or she is actually proclaiming the Word of God to the people. And it's very beautiful. And, um, and it's, it's better I would say to be in this sort of a, a, a place where you are facing, everybody can hear, everybody can, uh, with the microphone of course, and people can see the reading taking place and, and it can be proclaimed all the more easily. Back in the olden days, it was probably kind of hard to hear the reading uh, on the high altar. And so this makes a lot of good sense. You can see why um, the reforms that followed Vatican II came as they did. But in any event, the first reading is where we are. And so a person comes up, the reader comes up and does this reading. 90% of the time, 95% of the time, the first reading is from the Old Testament. And so I have the reading open here to the third Sunday of Lent, which we are getting ready to celebrate. Um, and, and it's from Exodus chapter 17. And the first reading is uh, foreshadowing what is then completed in the gospel, fulfilled in the gospel. So let me give you a little hint here. So today it's, it's chapter 17. It's about Moses leading the people in the desert. And it's about how, how they start grumbling. And, the, and, and Moses says, what am I supposed to do with all of these people? And because the, they're complaining, they're saying, have you brought us out here to thirst and, and so forth? And uh, there were 600,000 men 
and their wives and their children and their livestock. We, I, we don't typically think of that. We think, oh, there were probably about 25 people. You know, no, there was a mass of people. And how in the world was Moses supposed to corral all these folks? You know, and, uh, But we hear a little bit of that story and we hear about how they're thirsty and they're thirsty and they're thirsty. And so God tells Moses to go strike the rock and the water will come. And so it happens. Uh, give us water so that we may drink, say the people. And uh, so we all know the story and we know uh, how that goes. Then the gospel is a very lengthy one and it, we'll talk about more of the gospel here in a moment, in a couple of days. But the gospel is the Samaritan woman who goes to, who's at the well at noon and Jesus goes and finds her there. And, and Jesus asks her for a drink. And then, and then he reveals that he is the ultimate rock that we hear about in Exodus. That this, there's this rock that feeds all these people, that gives drink, the water to all these people. Well, remember Jesus on the cross? Water and blood flowing out to quench the thirst of the people. And so Jesus reveals himself to her and he says, if you knew to whom you were talking, you would say, uh, you would be asking me for a drink. And, and then the woman says, sir, give me this water you're talking about so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here for water. And so it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful story, but Jesus ends up being the ultimate well, all right? And that's one lesson that we take from our gospel this weekend. But you can see how that gospel is fulfilled by the first, by, the first reading is fulfilled by the gospel, is what I'm saying. So the first reading always foreshadows the gospel, and that is true. When is it not from the Old Testament? That's during the Easter season. The first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, which is, uh, of course, in the New Testament written by St. Luke. And it is the first book in the New Testament that is not one of the Gospels. It's kind of like the history book of the early church. Uh, and so, in any event, my, most times it's the Old Testament. The other thing I would just say about the readings is, if you were to go to Mass every day for three years, because we're on a three-year cycle, and uh, on Sundays, and then we're also on a different cycle during weekdays. But if you were to go to Mass every single day for three years, you would hear the whole Bible. And so uh, it's awesome. It's awesome how the Mass, we don't just hear the Word of God, but we actually, like everything that we've been talking about up until this point, it's all in the Scriptures. And of course, we were doing the Mass before the Scriptures it were put together in a book that came out in, I think, the year 382 by means of, the, of, a, of a conference of Catholic bishops that got together and discerned with the Holy Spirit which book should be in the Bible and which should not. And so we not only hear those readings proclaimed at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, but we also see them lived out in the most beautiful way. So the Mass came before the, the, script, the, the Bible as we know it, and, and that's just, I think, something that's important for us to, to remember. All right, everybody, I will see you tomorrow for the next episode.